Good afternoon. I'd like to uh, bring the uh, Northampton License Commission meeting uh, to order. Um, today is Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. Commissioners present are Brian Campanelli, Natasha Yakova, and Helen Kahn. Make an announcement that we are audio and video recording at this time. And at this time, are there any public comment? Seeing none, move on to item number three, application for short-term liquor license. Northampton Senior Services, Friday, May 10th, 2019, 5 to 8 p.m. Is there any representative here for that? Okay, move on to four. Application short-term liquor license for Glasgow Land Scottish Festival, Inc. How are you? State your name for uh, the record, please. My name is Peter Langmore. I'm chairman of the Glasgow Land Scottish Festival. Okay. This is for July 20th, 2019, 9.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. at Wood Park, uh, 300 North Main, Florence. Uh, Glasgow Land Scottish Festival, wine and malt. And it seems you have all of your proper paperwork in. So... We've done this before, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yep. So, uh, I don't have any questions. Any changes from last year? Uh, no, but uh, I have to say last year was our best year. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Um, uh, I like to say we, we were able to give away $30,000 as a result of that festival. We're that's a nonprofit, fantastic. so. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And very helpful with, with the pub. And what thank you to Look, Look Park as well. Yes, <laughs> great event. Perfect. I have no questions. I'll make a motion. Um, I make motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license for the Glasgow Land Scottish, Fest Scottish Festival, July 20th, 2019, from 9.30 to 10 p.m. at Look Park. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number five, public hearing on the application for a transfer of annual wine and malt package store license. Shell Hampton, DBA Racing Mark, 54 East Hampton Road, Northampton. Previous holder is EMQ Inc. Proposed manager is Mr. Patel. How are you? Good afternoon. My name is Tom Rook. I'm an attorney in Springfield with an office at 73 Chestnut Street. To my immediate left is Bobby Patel, the principal and sole shareholder of the Owen Shell Hampton Inc. And we're requesting a transfer of the beer and wine license uh, for the Racing Mark. Um, Bobby has been involved in this type of a business. He has owned three other beer and wine licenses for the past 10 years. Uh, he currently owns one in Springfield and one in Fitchburg. Um, his proposed manager of the real uh, is currently the manager for a racing mark in Springfield. And he has other experience with other convenience gas stations uh, in the greater Springfield area. In the 10 years that Bobby has held a uh, beer and wine licenses, he said no violations whatsoever in any of the locations, Fitchburg, Springfield, or where. Um, he's an on the hands-on uh, owner, uh, overseeing, not the licensed manager, uh, but he's very um, up-to-date on top of things. He runs a very clean business. The city council in Springfield uh, is very, very pleased with how he has cleaned up the neighborhood. Uh, he has over 60 cameras installed in his location in Springfield on Belmont Avenue, both inside and outside the premises. It's very helpful. The neighborhood likes it. The lighting is appropriate. And uh, I think he'd be a great asset to the town of Northampton based on his past business experience and my relationships with him. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. At this time, I'd like to uh, make a motion to open up a public hearing. Anybody have anything to say regarding this during a public hearing? Seeing no comments, uh, make a motion to close the public hearing on that. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the proposed manager has managed the liquor store, um, several of the stores before? Yes. yes. Okay. And then being that we are, you can't sell prior to 10 a.m., how do you propose if you're going to open prior to that? that what are you doing to stop sales? We do usually put a change for that door, whatever like five or six stores of beer and wine color, we just put a chain in. We always tell the employee and everybody like before 10 a.m. and after 11, I mean, I think it's 11. Yeah. 
11, yeah, after 11 p.m. I mean, we close it at that time anyway. So, but before that's what we do. Friday, May 10th, from 5 to 8 p.m. for the purpose of Arts Night Out. Second, all in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you. Apologies for being late. No worries. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm also going to make a motion to approve the request for the fee waiver. Second. short-term liquor license. Click blue space. May 16, 2019, 7 to 9 p.m. Location uh, click, nine and a half Market Street. Click music performance, wine and malt. Uh, tips and insurance are good. Can you state your name? Hi, uh, my name is Catherine IUG. Hi, Catherine, thank you for coming. Sure. Um, you've done this before? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so quick music, um, we have every year, winter, spring, uh, period of about uh, five months that we do a show once a month. Okay, great. Um, don't have any questions. I know the setup's the same as it usually is? Yep, yep, same bartenders we usually have. Yep. Um, so, yeah, all, okay. all the same. No questions here. No um, and I will make a motion to approve the application for the short, short term liquor license for Click Workspace on May 16th, 2019 from 7 to 9 p.m. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank you. Number seven, public hearing on application for alteration of license premises on the annual all alcohol restaurant license. Notch 8, Inc., DBA, Union Station, Tall Bar, Platform, Bar in the deck, 125A Pleasant Street, 16C approval request. State your name for the record. Uh, Jeremiah Nico, owner of the Union Station. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming. Okay. Um, time I'd like to uh, make a motion to open up the public hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So this is to, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're planning? So uh, we currently have the outdoor deck seating area. Um, over the past five years, we've taken the front section, which was all bushes and grass, and we put down concrete and hardscape uh, pavers and stuff and granite walls, and it came out really, really nice. So we're gonna add a, um, a wrought iron fence around the area, it's about 1,400 square feet. I can add about 80 seats, and it's just kind of a natural extension of the deck that's there, so. Is it a permanent fence, or is it a, is it? It's gonna be permanent, yep. Yeah, we might put it as a sleeve so we could pull it out for plowing in the winter, but uh, otherwise, 
otherwise it would be there permanently. So I want to bring up that I know you've had some violations in the past and now mm -hmm. you're expanding the seating area. So is there a way that you can assure us that you'll be able to <coughs> control that flow of patrons? Yeah, um, so um, yeah, it's the same principles <coughs> that we've applied. Um, I know the previous violation, we had a young girl that ran past our door guy. Um, you know, we can put in extra gates that will actually close, I think, um, after one o'clock so nobody could come in, they could just go out. We've been looking at different designs. There's not a lot out there for those, so um, we're trying to find a, a thing for that. But um, adding the wrought iron fence to about four and a half feet will really ensure that nobody can walk off of uh, that spot, you know, the, the lower patio with, with alcoholic beverages. So. so it sounds like it will be, even if you weren't expanding the seating, having this fencing would be an improvement on. Yeah, I mean, the deck itself, I mean, somebody could jump over the wall, yep. but I mean, there's. Know, outside of putting leashes on people, I don't think I can really control them. It's really it's not allowed. Yeah. So you are so you're talking about this area here in front of the drawing. Correct. Yeah. I just put the whole building so you could kind of see where yep. it, it relates to everything. Um, it's not near the bike path. It's just a parking lot. Uh, it's between the, the parking lot and the deck that's currently there. And I really would only have it open, I think, on the weekends anyway, so it's not like uh... And for the, um, the building inspector noted that there must be enough <coughs> toilets available for the occupants. Yep. And those are, would still remain inside, or is there a new bathroom happening? Um, I don't have plans for any yep. bathrooms, so we have the two that are part of the deck bar itself. Okay. Um, and we had talked about a way to open up the banquet bathrooms. Right. When I don't have events. Mm -hmm. weddings and such so we're looking at it I we talked about it yesterday so I've got to see what kind of things we can put in place to really uh, define that mm -hmm. um, we have a hallway that's open uh, when we don't have a wedding that goes out to the platform bathrooms and he said that was sufficient yep. um, so we have that open at all times uh, anyway when, we're, when we don't have events mm -hmm. um, so I think it's later on in the future try to figure out a way to maybe put them in a couple in the basement or, or right. add some but but yeah, we talked about, like I said, it was just yesterday that we spoke. And in terms of the occupancy, mm -hmm. um, that it's, you know, pending occupancy is not increased. Correct. Of the whole building. So would that include the event space? Correct. As well. So if it's a night that the deck is open and you have an event happening. Right. You would have to, you would have to um, make sure that the numbers inside for the event didn't right. tip yeah, the no, scale. So, yeah. I mean, we're currently, I think, at like 1,200. Okay very rare that I have to close the yep. doors off. Um, and that was all predicated on bathrooms. That's why we built right. you know, additional bathrooms because our security exits are double doors. Like we could never mm -hmm. be recycling bathrooms inside. So. Right. So your two current bathrooms that you have there now handle the people, the flow of traffic that you have. Yeah, I mean, I mean all bathrooms. Fence, it's not gonna have yeah, I think all bathrooms on like a busy Saturday night. Right. You know, I mean, not that it's normal, but you know people are gonna probably have to wait somewhat. But it's uh, it's never been a, a major issue by any stretch. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> and so you're talking about putting in this more permanent fence. Do you have a date for when that would happen? Um, I have the fence. We were just waiting. They redid the per uh, parking lot just the last four days. So I was waiting for them to finish up before I drill any holes and mm -hmm. finish it up. So probably um, no later than June first. I would actually say Memorial Day and I have it in place because I want to utilize that deck space.
seeing no other comments, I'm uh, going to go ahead and make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we have to vote um, according to the 16C approval for uh, any uh, detriment to the education. alteration of license premises for the all annual all alcohol restaurant license at notch 8 incorporated dba union station tunnel bar platform bar and the deck at 125 a pleasant street second that all in favor aye, aye. 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 Right. thank, thank you, you very much thank all right, number eight, application for short-term liquor license, Frank Noel Park, or Memorial Park, September 28, 2019, 1 to 5 p.m., 300 North Main Street, Florence, Ballfield, Brew Festival, Wine and Malt. State your name for the record? Sean Boyer, <coughs> the director of the park. All right, Sean, thanks for coming. So you tell us a little bit about this? Uh, we've had this for a number of years in the Pine Cedar, um, where we already have a liquor license, but we're moving to the ball field to let the events be a little bit bigger. We purchased all the alcohol from the different breweries throughout uh, the Pioneer Valley, and then we asked the brewers to come and actually pour. So when people go up to the brewer, they can say, oh, what kind of hops did you use? And they can get like real answers other than volunteers or our staff. So um, that's really the basis of the event. We try to focus on Pioneer Valley or just outside the Pioneer Valley breweries only. Can you describe how what the setup will be like the ball field? Uh, so we put up a snow fence around the entire like activity area. Uh, there'll be a large tent uh, and possibly a few other tents, depending on how many breweries we get. Uh, we will provide all of the uh, uh, surf safe for tips, paperwork, just prior to the event to any so we can comply. Uh, but we're still waiting for breweries to sign up. But yeah, that'll be it. We'll have staff located at any of the entrances. Everybody be carded. There'll be a certain color ID for people who are 21 and over. If there's designated drivers or anything like that, they'll you know they'll get a different color. We haven't determined the colors yet, but that's fine. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank Look Memorial Park Park for September 28th, um, 1 to 5 p.m. Um, at 300 North Main Street, the performance at the ball field for the Brew Festival. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Number nine, application for short term liquor license. Trustees of Forbes Library, DBA Forbes Library. June 3rd, 2019, 6 to 8 30 p.m., 20 West Street. Um, Hosmer Gallery Reception, Redstone, McDonough, Kippen, White, uh, Wine and um, Malt, Request Fee Waiver. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hi. Can you say Hi. your name, please? Lisa Hoffman. Hi. Thanks for coming. Um, same as always, I presume? Yes. So, very good. It says good. that the line is shorter to put in the description of the event. Right. I always want to tell you all about it. Oh, okay. You can tell us all about it. That's all right. It's people still waiting. Okay. On the <laughs> like on the floor. Right. You have the floor. <laughs> Um, if nothing's changed, any no further questions? I will make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license for the trustees of Forbes Library, DBA Forbes Library, June 3rd, 2019, 6 to 8.30 p.m. in the Hosmer Gallery. And um, and I approve the request for the fee waiver. Remove the waiver. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 10, application for short-term liquor licenses. Northampton Center for the Arts, 33 Holly Street, Wine and Mall, request fee waiver for May 17, 2019, 6 to 10 p.m., Saturday, May 18, 2 to 5 p.m., the Cat Wagner Dance Performance, and then Saturday, May 18, 2019, for 5.30 to 10.30 p.m., Pioneer Valley Jazz Shares Concert, and Friday, May 31st, 2019, 6 to 10 p.m. And June 1st, 2019, 6 to 10. Um, happy uh, Valley Guitar Orchestra concert. Hi, can you say your name, please? Kenny Bark. Hi, thanks for coming. Out of retirement? <laughs> no. <laughs> she got sick. <laughs> it's really true. Oh. Sandy. You're so good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> so, uh, same as always? Same as always. Okay. Yes, these are all, I mean, the dance performance is a little bit different, but this is just pretty much serving the serving the public audience for these mm -hmm. community arts events. Okay. Any questions? I have any questions either. I will make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses for Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Holly Street um, for the three events as listed in the agenda. I'll second, all in oh, favor? And approve the fee waiver, I'm sorry. Second that, all in favor. <laughs> Aye. Thank Aye. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11, uh, violation hearings. Item number 11, we are here today for three violation hearings for, what is this, a B? A B, uh, B. Yes. Uh, DBA uh, News Cafe, <laughs> 84 Maple Inc, DBA Doyle's Package Store, and uh, Liquid Edge Inc, DBA Viva Fresh Pasta. Um, we have a court uh, stenographer here today as well and uh, we thank you for being here. I am confirming the receipt of all three hearing letters sent certified mail to the managers of record on April 12, 2019. Okay. The alleged violations that occurred on March 7, 2019 are as follows. Um, for bead, um, the violation of 204 CMR 2.5 permitting uh, an illegal uh, illegality of the licensed premises to what MGL, Mass General Law, Chapter 138, 34, sale and delivery of an alcoholic beverage to a person under 21 years of age. Are they all the same? Okay, um, for 84 Maple Inc. DBA Doyle's Package Store violation 204 CMR 2.5 permitting an illeg illegality <laughs> Ken um, on the license premises to wet um, MGL chapter 138 34 sale and delivery of an alcoholic beverage to a person under 21 years of age and for Liquid Edge Inc. DBA uh, Viva Fresh Pasta Violation 204 CMR 
2.5 permitting um, uh, the same license uh, illegality on license premise to with MGL chapter 138-34 sale of delivery of an alcoholic beverage to a person under 21 years of age. They still need to speak up but I can't hear you. Oh sorry about that. <clears throat> At this time, any witnesses and anybody else who wishes to speak on any of these alleged violations, please stand and raise your right hand. Okay. Do you swear to affirm that the information you are about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. At this time, um, we'll go through the violations one by one and ask a representative from the police department to please present their findings related to uh, I'm a News Cafe. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. State your uh, name for the record, please. My name is Brian Letzize. I'm a sergeant for the Northampton Police. Thanks for coming. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, or tell us all about? Uh, the violation, so on March 7th, uh, 2019, Officer Cromer and Officer Gregory and myself initiated an alcohol compliance check throughout the city of Northampton. With assistance from the Northampton Prevention Coalition, we obtained seven minors to attempt to purchase alcohol without identification from the three or from all licensed establishment, establishments within the city. In accordance with Northampton License Commission rules, Northampton Police Policies, Procedures, and Mass General Laws, advance notice was posted via press release and social media for the Northampton Police Department. The seven uh, minors are known for the Northampton Police and were under the age of 21 on this date. Prior to conducting the compliance check, each volunteer arrived at the station. They each took a preliminary breath test registering a, a zero blood alcohol concentration. They were photographed and checked to make sure they had no contraband on their person. Upon completing the check, another uh, photograph was taken and another preliminary breath test was administered registering a zero blood alcohol concentration. Um, they're each provided with buy money and divided into three groups. Two minors went with Officer Cronin, three went with Officer Gregory, and two went with me. Um, in compliance with the previous mentioned rules and regulations for the checks, all 96 establishments were checked, with 23 of them being closed at the time of, of the check. Three licensed businesses were found in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34, which is the sale or delivery of an alcoholic beverage to a person under the age of 21 years. Um, did you have a preference of which one went first? I'm just going to read how the violations took place. Do We're going to do one at a time, so if you could just do the, um, the first, I'm going to this cafe. Sure. At approximately 7.34 hours, Officer Gregory observed a 20-year-old female known to the police with a $20 bill. She, along with two 19-year-old females who were also known to the police, entered Amadeus Cafe, 44 Main Street, Northampton. After being seated, the 20-year-old female ordered a Blue Moon beer from the waiter. She was served the beer with no identification being requested. The waiter was later described as a white male with glasses and sideburns. The females paid for the beer for $5.89 and exited with a receipt. After all the compliance checks were completed, Officer Gregory responded back to the cafe with the minor. Um, at the restaurant, Matthew Stabile was identified as the waiter who served the beer. Manager Jose uh, Yungalazo was provided with a notice of violation, and both were advised of receiving a subpoena to appear at this meeting. Um, copies of the receipt were attached and uh, tagged as evidence. Okay. Do you have anything else to add, sir? Uh, no, not for violation. this violation. That's it. All right. So at this time, we're going to ask the uh, representative for Amadou um, Cafe on the to approach the podium. Can you state your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Abid Asad. I'm on the uh, Amadou's Cafe. Okay. Um, do you have anything to say in, in regards to this violation? Yeah. Usually, I've been there almost for 20 years. I never. First time to happen, always ask for Heidi. Even him, he was asking for Heidi all the time, but that day was busy and he was starting with making cappuccino. 
and usually it's um, service, you know, country service, and she comes, she order beer, but she's thinking maybe he's gonna, she's gonna order the meal. That's the way things happen. But they never have any problems. And he came before, I think maybe eight years ago, he was asking the same thing, what happened? But he sent me a letter and he said, I thank you for asking for ideal stuff. Okay. Any other questions? So, yeah, so you understand that the IDs need to be. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Do you guys have any questions? I don't have questions. I don't think so. And you're saying, as far as you're aware, there's been no other violations at no. your restaurant? No, first time. I still have two so. licenses anyway, and I give one away when it happens. Okay. okay. Um, do you have any other, is there any other witnesses and representations to a violation? Um, William, would you like you. to add anything? No? Okay. I'm willing to answer any questions, but I don't really have anything to add. Are you the server? Yes. Okay. All right. So there's no denial that it happened, that it was just a record, uh, yeah. uh, recognition that it was a violation at yeah. that time. Okay. That's what is your name? Matthew Stabile. Do you agree with the statement of the uh, uh, sergeant? That you can't sell alcohol to my No, that you didn't ask for an ID? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. You guys have any other questions you're hearing about? I do. I don't have other questions, so. Let's see, no other witnesses. Uh, gentleman next to Matthew, do you have anything to add? Well, actually, I'm um, uh, working on the kitchen. Okay. Uh, I'm going to receive the paper from, from. I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Does the uh, police department have anything, uh, recommendations that you'd like for the commission to take into consideration regarding this violation? Um, Chief Casper said there's a body she had another meeting across the state today, but. Um, we have no record of any recent previous violations for Amanus. We would request at least a one day suspension. If it were to be suspended, we'd like request it to be suspended for at least up to nine months, just based on the, the money and time it takes to put these uh, compliance checks together. Um, it's, it's rare that we would have a chance within six months or so to put another one together. Okay, thank you. So, no discuss, um, decide what we want to do as far as the mission and violation. Okay. Um, just go with the uh, officer and recommendation. Yeah, it's in line. What we've done through the past. So there's not a previous violation. Yes, so I'm comfortable. He's asking for nine, so we usually do the six month, but nine's not a problem, especially if he's not had anything in the past. And yeah. Last check, eight years ago, we passed. Yep. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So we need the liquor license for Avenue Cafe for one day held in suspension for nine months. Okay, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you understand what that, pardon me? You understand what that means? It means like a one day no sell and... Uh, but you don't nine. have that. You have that pending. So if there's another violation in nine months, in nine months yeah. you're going to lose that license yeah. for a day. Yeah. Okay? And that's in line with the... Uh, you know, the, uh, oh, uh, so is it? Do you have? What do you say? One day? Do I need not selling for one day or? 
you you can conduct business as normal. As normal, okay. Correct. If there's a, if there's another violation, then we will call that one day suspension yeah. and and take your license for, for that one months. day. For if, one day. Okay. Correct. So within the next nine month period of time, if there's another violation, then we will suspend the nine license months. for one day. Okay. Thank you. Right. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. written uh, decision will be sent out certified mail to the licensee and the ABCC um, within three business days. At this time, I'd like to ask Sergeant to uh, present his findings related to Doyle's package store. Again, on March 7th, this time around 6, 19 hours, uh, I provided an 18-year-old male known to the police with a $20 bill. He exited my MR cruiser and entered Doyle's package store located at 84 Maple Street in Florence. When he exited the store four minutes later, he was carrying a brown paper bag came back to the cruise and stated that he purchased a six-pack of Angry Orchard Hard Cider for $9.30. He provided the $10.70 in change. Um, he said there was only one clerk in the store. The clerk was described as a white male with a short beard. Upon completion of the compliance checks, I returned to the store to find it closed for the evening. Uh, when I returned to work on Saturday, March 9th, I returned to the business. I spoke with David Cossia, who admitted to being the clerk on Thursday evening. When I mentioned the sale to him, he remembered that uh, the customer and said that he did not ask for identification. He uh, notified the owner, Mr. Stephen Shea, of the violation, and I would provide uh, Mr. Cassier with a notice of the violation, advising he would be subpoenaed to this uh, compliance or commission here. Okay, thank you. I just, uh, sorry, I would also like to note that um, we're taking the ruling Doyle's package store did have a violation on June 13th of 2015. I believe they uh, had a, somewhere in a one to two day license suspension that was sus as well suspended. Um, again, talking to the chief prior, we would ask that it either be a, if it was gonna be suspended, it'd be a lengthier suspension or that the one day be imposed on them. Um, they were also, the violation took place during one of these compliance checks as well. Okay. Any Thank questions? you. At this time, I'd like to ask the representative from Doyle's back and store to approach the podium. Yeah. State your name for the record, please. Hello, I'm Steve Shea. Hi. Do um, you have anything to add? Would you like to comment on the uh, violation? Um, uh, don't contest the description by the Northampton Police, and neither does my employee, Dave Cotsey, I believe. Yeah. Um, Clearly, the, the customer was not, um, didn't have their ID checked. Um, Dave says that he was, that, that um, they came in between a group of people that was known to him, and uh, even though he should have carded them due to the social context, that, that was the reason that he didn't card them. Right. Okay. All right. I, I, I did want to say uh, the, Officer uh, stated that there was a two-day suspension suspended in fifteen. Fifteen. I don't recall the two-day suspension. I know that uh, there was a violation in two thousand and fifteen. Uh, it's reading a one-day suspension held in advance for three months. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Is there anybody else that uh, witness that would like to add anything? Um, David could speak. Hey. I know I'm at fault. I should have checked the ID. So okay. um, it's not going to happen again with all my years of working in bars and stuff. But first time I've ever violated it before. So 
it was a shock for me, but it's not gonna happen again. All right, and what's your name? Dave Cassia. Okay, thank you. Can Say I your last name one more time. Cassia, C-O-S-C-I-A. Perfect, thank you. Can I ask just what's the common practice when someone comes in, is there a sort of an assessment based on what their age looks like to, you know, whether or not you ID them? Or is there sort of an across the board process? Well, I usually, usually try. I always try to ID everyone, unless I've ID them before. They're a constant regular that comes every day. Then I've ID them before, and I know that they're above age. Then I usually don't ID them every single time they come in. Okay. Bye. <coughs> and that's what happens. So there was other people in there, and he kind of mixed in with them, and I know them from prior because they come in every day, and I just. I didn't do my job right. All right, thank you. Uh, I want to make a further statement, yeah. if I could. Um, I asked my employees to card anyone who's not known to them as having been their, their um, age been identified in the past. So, okay. so you, in other words, you said that now you've corrected, you know, you've made. Um, I, I, I spoke to Dave after I was informed of the incident and reminded him how important it is to as he knows how important it is to get proof of age. Um, um, again, with, some, with, with someone coming in the store you haven't dealt with before and you haven't carded them before. Mm -hmm. right. How many employees do you have? Two, in the liquor store. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I would think two days in 
So do you understand what that? Um, yeah. So in other words, your violation is we're we violate we're, we're um, giving a sanction of two day suspension, but instead of actually moving on that, we're going for a full year out. So within 12 months, if you violate again, we're taking those two days. Okay. All right. I understand. Okay. So right, do you have any other questions on that? No. I thank the uh, commission for the consideration. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. A written decision um, will be sent out in a certified mail. Uh, to the licensee and the ABCC within three days, uh, three business days. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask the sergeant to uh, come up to the podium uh, for Viva Fresh Pasta, please? Again, on March 7th, this time at um, 7.33 p.m. Officer Cronin observed a 19-year-old male and a 20-year-old female, both known to the police department, at their Viva Fresh Pasta, located at 249 Main Street, Northampton. Each minor had a $20 bill in their possession, which were provided by Officer Cronin. When they entered the restaurant, they sat at the bar. At the bar, the female ordered a glass of Pinot Grigio wine. No identification was requested by the waitress, and the female was served wine. They paid for the wine, six dollars and forty-two cents. Exit the restaurant and provided the receipt to Officer Cronin. Upon completion of the compliance checks, Officer Cronin responded back to the restaurant uh, with the female who was served. The business was not closed, but Officer Cronin was able to speak with the chef, who stated that he was aware of the incident um, on that evening. The chef stated the waitress uh, brought the couple to his attention because it seemed weird. They ordered just the wine, didn't drink it, and then immediately paid for it and left. The chef specifically asked if she had asked for identification, and she stated she had. Officer Cornell was able to confirm that the female had no identification on her at the time, and that it was never requested. The chef provided uh, Christine Polkholtz as the manager and the name on the license. Um, on Saturday, March 9th, I met with Polkholtz and the restaurant owner. I provided Buckholtz with a notice of violation and advised her they would be receiving subpoenas to appear in front of the license permission. Um, uh, it should be noted that the owner and Buckholtz were adamant that the female provided identification prior to being served the wine. I attempted to make contact with the waitress who Buckholtz identified as Charlene Siever. Um, as of March 10th, uh, I, had, I, had called, I had called the server numerous times with the information provided by the business. I checked the restaurant residence on March 10th and I had been, I had been unable to make contact with the waitress regarding the incident. Um, therefore, I have no follow up on that case. I can just simply state to you the process that I already did about how we go through these minors. Um, essentially, if they're claiming that a minor provided identification, she would have provided a fake ID, which is still a violation. Also, these people were responsible for checking approximately 25 to 30 businesses between the two of them. So now they would have had to have some motive to violate that specific business, and it would be two minors who will both be aware that they were committing a felony um, in the presence of a police officer, essentially. Um, this is the only violation that these two minors had the entire evening. Um, I've run, been running these compliance checks now for at least four or five years, and I've never had that be an incident. Um, the minors get no incentive if they get a violation or don't get a violation or anything like that. They're just asked to come try to purchase alcohol, and then if they can't, they're to turn around and walk out. Even if they're asked the identification, they're to turn around and leave. So you're saying that the one, um, the minor that you sent in had a fake ID anyway? No, I'm not saying that. That's a claim that was made by, the, essentially the staff is saying that they did card when we did the follow-up to notify them of the violation. They said that the person was okay. carded. Right. Um, when we send the people in, I and mean, we don't pat them down or frisk them or anything like that. They go through all their property at the station, they leave it in the trunk so the cruisers are at the station locked up in my office. Um, and that's just the case. Um, that's just a claim made by the business at the time we investigated. And I made numerous attempts 
throughout weekend to make contact with the server and I had left messages or run through our address and system. I went back to the business twice and I couldn't make contact with them. I would also just like to note that in, we have a previous violation for Viva Fresh Pasta that occurred in the end of 2014 on December 26th. I assume that was probably the similar one day suspension, suspended for at least six months if not longer. Um, the chief is not is here now, but again, as I expressed with the Doyle's incident, we request that either a one day suspension be imposed or if it's gonna be suspended, that it be suspended for a longer period of time and it be multiple days. Okay, and that's it. All right, thank you very much. I'd like to ask representatives of Fresh Pasta to approach the podium, please, and state your name for the record. Do you want us one at a time, or eight? Yeah. Okay. I'm Christine Buckholz, co-owner manager. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any comments regarding? We do have a difference of opinion, <laughs> which we did discuss with the sergeant. Um, we take the issue of serving alcohol seriously, and um, we have, you know, I have a copy of. Charlene's uh, employee manual, which is from the day one they sign, they are trained and signed. And a statement saying that they are not to ever serve anybody under the age 21 to card people, and it's grounds for immediate dismissal. We have signs posted in the restaurant, you know, on this year, you know, this date this year. And You know, it's distressing to, to have this ha happen, or allegedly happen. Um, when I talked with Charlene, this right here, and Max Anderson is also an employee of ours, and um, I had left for the day. Um, I do have one question in your um, statement, notice of hearing, it said, neither the waitress nor the female who served the wine requested to see identification, but there was only one female in the house at the time, and that was Charlene. No, I had left, and the other woman who was a server that night had already left, so that's confusing to me. Um, but when I questioned Charlene, and she can speak for herself, but she did look at an ID, she said to me, we don't have a camera, I wish we did, but she said there was the person at the end of the bar, there was a little bag, and she held up the ID, which she looked at, and, um, when I mentioned it the next day, because I was waiting to speak with you, because um, you weren't on on Friday, I think, and I spoke to Max, who said, I saw her card. I saw her card, the, the, girl, the girl at the bar, I saw her card then, because Max was also serving, it was toward the end of the night, and he had, if you guys are, do you know our layout? The end of the bar, if you were sitting, if you were the customers in question, there's a, Max was serving a table right over here on the, you know, on that long, long line of benches. So he was right in the dining room and he just happened to be according. And he can also speak for himself, but this is what they said. So we do have a difference of opinion. And independently, um, they both had the same description, pulling something out of a little bag and holding it up. So recognize that it's a difference of opinion. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? I don't know if you want it. I see, um, and then well, actually then Charlene did go and talk to the chef who was our manager on duty if I'm not there. Okay. To immediately say, that was weird. Yeah. Right. There was something strange about that transaction. Are there any questions for Yeah, I don't know if this question is for you or for um, the server, but um, I mean, it's confusing. You know, for us hearing this, you know, it, it sounds as though I, I cannot imagine a reason that one of these um, underage volunteers would no, intentionally sort of try to deceive, you know, the people that they're trying to, um, to look at or investigate. Um, so, I don't, I guess I don't know what explanation, if you would have some explanation about 
if there was yeah. some personal but vendetta or something that. about why she would do that. So, so yeah, yes, I guess. What was the question? Well, well, it's just confusing, you know, for us hearing this because we heard and heard the sergeant's report and and sort of what their mission is that night. Mm -hmm. Um, so it does sound as though then this individual ha would have some sort of personal reason to violate what she was doing for the Northampton Police Department. I mean, I, did, I, I had never seen her before. I don't think that it was anything malicious at all. I just, when, they, when Christine talked to me about it, I didn't even bring up that I had asked for the idea when I talked to her because when I did look, I looked, she held up an ID for me. I didn't look at the date clearly. So I, in my head, I knew I did done it. I had made the violation anyways. Mm -hmm. It was still a violation, but so I didn't say anything about it. It was the next day that she called me and she said, well, Matt said he saw you ask for an ID. And I said, I did, but I didn't look at it. I, I only glanced at it. I didn't look at it well enough. So I didn't even say anything about it. I don't think it was anything malicious. So. Can I just get you to state your name? Okay. Charlene Seaver. Okay, and you are the server? I am the server. Okay. So you asked for an ID, but you acknowledged not having actually checked the date of yes. the ID. I glanced at it. Mm -hmm. It was a busy night, and I was I had tables, and I was working behind the bar, so I was kind of just I looked at it and moved on. It is, I know I wasn't there, but it, I mean, is there a chance that it's you know sort of perfunctory? You ask for an ID, but then don't really. I, I mean, she held one up. She, didn't she hold did up. hold one up. She, she did have up. an ID in her hand. Okay. And is there a reason that you didn't answer the phone calls of the, it sounds like the sergeant was trying to track you down for a while after the night of that violation? I have no specific reason, really. I'm not the kind of person who answers my phone ever, really. I didn't get a voicemail or I would have called him back. And that's probably just something to do with my phone because I've had problems with that. But I wasn't any trying to avoid him on purpose at all. Mm -hmm. And the days that he did go into the restaurant, I just didn't happen to be working. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions? I don't have other questions. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yes, yeah, so um, state your name, please. Oh, my name is Max Landerson. So I was working at the same time, and I was at another table, so I wasn't close enough to see exactly, you know, what the ID was she produced, but I saw her ask for an ID, and the young woman produced like a bag and took some kind of card out of it and showed it to her. And I also remember going back and um, talking with Charlene in the back of the restaurant for a pretty long time, like maybe five or ten minutes about the incident. You know, she remarked she, remarked she found it really strange that, um, the young woman had just acted pretty odd when she took it out, like in a kind of suspicious manner. And that, you know, once she had set the wine down, she just got up and left. So the fact that I remember her seeing it take that out and that conversation we had, it just seems kind of odd to me. Was there, I can imagine being in that position and that there would be a lot of discussion. Do you think you had a concern at that time that what was happening actually happened? You know, that that was sort of a setup for checking for whether you were carding? No. Um, when I found out the next day that that's what it was, it was totally shocking. I just thought it was kind of a weird person. Can I say something? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I did, like Christine said, when after it happened, I, I put the wine on the bar. They sat there for a minute or two, maybe, and then they just left. And I remember as soon as they left, I said something to a woman who was sitting uh, a couple seats down on the, from the bar to her, and I mentioned that it seemed weird that they didn't touch the wine at all. So the first thing I did was go back and I told Chris and one of our other cooks that works that it had happened. Like I said, like just so you know, this seems sketchy. I don't know. Right. Okay. Can yeah. you, may I add something? Also, um, I did then suspend her for two days for no with no work. Um, as an admonition and um, in addition she has taken the alcohol tips class I believe it's for no you had it before right yeah yeah so she's Tuesday. I took it again on um, Tuesday and she did not receive at her home um, the notice I think 
Is this Annie? Is that you? Well, I called, I'm not sure who I spoke to, um, at the mayor's office and said, because I asked her if she'd received a notice to this hearing about it, and she hadn't. I was like, that's a little unusual not for her not to be asked to come. So I inquired, and I don't know if it was you that I spoke to, said, oh, we sent one, and then they put a note on her door um, that she needs to go to the post office to sign the, the uh, return receipt, which she did. Uh, what day is today? Thursday? Yesterday? Or was it Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I don't know if you got it back. Yeah, then. I got it today. Okay, so. But can you speak to that issue with the mail coming to your. Like, yeah, uh, I never got it. Um, and it might just be about my apartment building. The downstairs, downstairs door is locked during the day if there's because I live above a restaurant and the office for the restaurant is upstairs. So you have to have a key to get inside the building. And if um, the mailman can't get inside the building at the time, he won't do anything to try to get in. So I didn't even know about the letter about today until she called me Tuesday and said, you need to go get this letter right now. Yeah, and um, if I could add something to that. Can I just hold up one question? So she called you? She called me and told me that I- Did you pick I, up on the first or the third ring or second ring? I actually had to call her back. Okay. <laughs> so one other quick question. Um, when she never got the mail, you told her about this hearing? Well, I... Yeah, just yes or no would be fine, because I we already established that you did, correct? I asked her if she got the, a notice, and she said no. So then I told her about it. So you told her about it. So, uh, Sergeant, are any of the people in this room, the people that you went the back next two days and saw and said you were trying to get a hold of this? I had, I had spoken with um, Christine and okay. the owner on that Saturday. All right, I had great. gone back. I had also attempted to call um, Max, I believe, over the phone. I just I have, know. okay, thank Sorry. you. I have one more question then. If he actually came in twice looking for you, called you, you never got his calls, you never got anything back to him so that he could actually speak with you about it, how is it that you didn't also tell her that the officer is looking for her and then why wouldn't you reach out? I just have that question. I mean, if the communication is working really well on the fact that we need you to come here, you know, and due to the mail, I, I would think that I'd like to establish that it should have happened the same when the officers are looking to talk to you. Are, are you speaking to me? Well, kind of both of you. I, I, I'm not aware that, that the sergeant that you came back in, I mean, I'm there a lot, but I never, I never saw any, any of you had come to me and said, I haven't been able to reach her. I would say, well, let me get her for you. I came in that Saturday and well, I spoke to staff. They said you weren't there yet and that she wasn't there and no one had a contact information for her. At that time, I had been to her apartment several times. I had called her several times. If we had a chance to have communication, I could have asked questions about what type of identification was provided, what was the state, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all. I, I wasn't aware you'd ever come to my apartment. I'm sorry. I'd There's only so much we can do to. Yeah, it's not. Right. That's not really the point. I guess the, the point was it, it was just amazing that you never got any calls and, and anything. Um, but yet, you got the call about today's meeting and you're here. So I just wanted to establish that communication. So, Excuse me, but one other yeah, thing, so uh, Sergeant, when you sent the girl in, did she have any kind of a bag or? I was the. I was not the officer who witnessed her, but I verified again with Officer Cronin that she went in with no items on her. The officers, it's, it's a very simple task when we conduct these. It takes a lot to set up, but it's the same protocol for all, almost nearly 100 establishments that we check. They go in with nothing on them. They're allowed to bring a cell phone for safety reasons, and they're allowed to bring the, the cash that we photographed prior to them going in okay. um, to verify that, you know, some of it's to make sure no alcohol is consumed, others to make sure that this is, you know, that they, things like this don't happen. Correct. The okay. distance they walk is from like the street corner of Masonic and Main Street right to, and that's the corner that the Fresh Pasta is on. Okay. Are you guys uh, fairly busy? What night was this? A Friday? It was a Thursday night. A Thursday? Are you fairly busy on Thursdays? Uh, that night it wasn't especially busy, I don't believe. Yeah, but is it possible that when you witness somebody pull up a bag that you could, you know, so close to happening, I mean, things you could have just not remembered the fact that this girl had nothing and... No, and so you're not confusing definitely it? that customer. Okay. And if I could add something else, please. Sure. Um, so I, you know, 
To be honest, I don't answer phone calls from numbers I don't recognize, but I check every voicemail, so I would have gotten a voicemail. I never got one. And um, the certified letter that I eventually got was not addressed to my address. It was addressed to my mother's house. I assume because that's the last place I've been registered to vote in Northampton, but they had the zip code wrong, so it had been routed all over. And like the mailman had written notes on trying to find my address and stuff, so there was also an issue with communication with me. Can I ask you, Sergeant, did you leave voicemails when you were trying to contact? I did. Oh. We also, the reason we use the addresses that we have are addresses we have in our police records, and when I run individuals' licenses, those are the addresses that they have on their license. So it's they're required to update the registry with their license. And would you mind restating, I know you said this, but the protocol for these volunteers going in is that if they are asked for an ID, they turn around and leave? Correct. They, okay. Correct. So, that being said, um, the wine would have never had a chance to hit the, the bar. If that's it it should have. And if, right. again, if, if she brought in, you know, if my officer missed it or and she did violate, you know, what she signed off when she did the uh, compliance check, if she provided a license, if it was her license, it was someone under the age of 21, or it's a fake ID. Um, She's 20 years old, so the earliest or the earliest distance from her photograph could be when she was 16 and a half, uh, if not sooner. And again, if it was an out-of-state ID, you know, I guess you know, the things with faking Massachusetts identification is pretty difficult to do. Um, even when we confiscate fake IDs, they're usually out-of-state or various other things. And again, we're not getting into a whole a list of the violations with IDs. It's a very simple process. Yeah, no. May I ask also, is there a protocol so in this type of situation where the server says that she produced something, do you go back and talk to that volunteer about, or get some statement from her about what the interaction was? Ideally, we, have, we, don't, we don't recruit these um, volunteers. They, they do get some compensation through the Northampton Prevention Coalition. You know, it's advised through state law or in our own rules and regulations that the police department not be the people to seek out the uh, minors for obvious reasons. Um, I do have the contact information. Had I talked to the staff and you know they verified specific things for me, I would have considered it this time. But ideally, we like these minors to be done with their contributions. But they're not looking to have them come and testify and things like that. Ideally, if it's something that that's close, we would just not push the violation and we would just document it in our my offense report. Again, I had the officer's word that, you know, an observation that she went in with nothing but her phone and her cash. Um, the people who witnessed all these things, for whatever reasons, didn't get my phone messages and didn't respond when I went to their apartment. Again, I'm, I only go to certain extents, you know, and then we can come to the hearing to discuss them. Who conducts the trainings of the volunteers? Is it the police department or is it the Northampton uh, Prevention Coalition? So the Prevention Coalition verifies that uh, they have good candidates, you know, people without records and things like that. We then verify them again. We check them for in-state and out-of-state criminal records. I check their driving history. In the past running these, I've, people have showed up and I've realized that, you know, they have a minor possession of an alcohol charge or maybe we're even charged with possession of a fake ID. Uh, prior to me, one person actually showed up with a fake ID in their wallet and they were asked to leave. Um, the training is very simple. We go through um, the, the rules and regulations of of the compliance check. We tell them exactly what you know we want them to do. We have them turn in all their property. Either they can put it in their own cars, again, lock it in my office, or lock it in the trunk of the cruiser they're in, depending upon what it is um, and how they may have gotten to the station that day. Um, and then they're given the very basics. You go inside, try to purchase something of lower value of alcohol. We only have so much money. Can't be buying okay. thirty or forty dollars a whack of uh, alcohol. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anybody else uh, from Fresh Boss have anything else to add? Uh, not right now. I just think that there's a, there's there seems to be some inconsistency here. I know the police department try to contact us or our employees, but there seems to be some real holes in. I couldn't even get the, uh, the zip code right. I'm trying to uh, contact Max 
and stuff like that. I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know. I understand that, but all of you are here. Right. Everybody that's that needs to be is, is here. Okay. Oh. I appreciate it. And that. for the record, could you just state your name for the stenographer? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm Paul Milani. I'm, I'm the original owner. Um, I guess one more question from me, just to confirm again, that you said she held something up, but you didn't actually check the date. But she did ask. For an ID, but she didn't. I think the with, And if something was held up, there was, she didn't actually check the date on it, is what so I'm hearing. That she had stated that this person held something up, but she didn't actually check the date on it. Yeah. So I mean, whether or not she had held something just, up. Just yes. one side note again. We don't, I don't believe she went in with these, but even if she did, she provided an ID. Massachusetts is very clear. Uh, 21 or under license is automatically vertical. Right. You can have them vertical and be over 21, but if it's a hard, I mean, it's an obvious sign with Massachusetts. And in big red letters, it'll say under 21. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, seeing no other witnesses or statements from uh, Fresh Pasta. Uh, Sergeant, can you just go over what your recommendation was one more time, please? Again, um, myself and the chief had previously discussed it, and the Fresh Pasta did have a violation similar to Doyle's package store within six months of the, their violation. So we request that you know the commission either have them serve the one-day suspension, or if they were to suspend it, suspend it for a lengthier period of time beyond nine months, or for more more for more days. You say that they actually violated within the six month of suspension of the day? No, no, no. Was, they uh, had a previous violation yeah, on yeah. the same timeline as um, Doyle's package. Oh, uh, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and that was, we have that information here just for everyone. It, it was a um, one day suspension and that was suspended for six months. And that was, um, the violation was December 26, 2014. to me that um, obviously she was served and whether or not she actually had an ID, the dates were not checked, which is a violation in itself. So we still have no idea whether or not that person was 21 or under. So to me, I think uh, it's pretty clear that's a violation. I agree. Do you want to make a motion? I will uh, make a motion that the commission has determined a violation violation did in fact occur at Viva Fresh Pasta on the evening of March 7th. As stated. Yes, as stated in the Rockingham Police Department report. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Was it March 7th? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So now that we've um, determined that a violation has occurred, we need to make a decision on the sanction. So in the past, there was one one day suspended for six months. Mm -hmm. uh, we both, we all heard the um, sergeant's uh, police, Northampton PD's uh, recommendation. Um, again, with the same you know, thought process, I'm willing to go more days, longer term. Mm -hmm. um, unless you guys feel that Um, no, I mean, I would be in agreement with that, and I, I want the record to also note, I appreciate that the restaurant has provided additional training right. for the server and acknowledged um, that somebody was served without checking a date right. on the license. Um, Agreed. Yeah. But I would, I would support that sanction. I think so. I mean, I do have a concern that there seems to be a bit of evasiveness about the incident as it mm -hmm. was. Um, well, it's hard for ultimately there's an admission that whether or not an right. ID was shown that it was a the date admission. did not. <laughs> it's not checked. Right. Right. Well, I mean, without a concern. Bearing witness to it, it's one entity and another. Um, yeah. 
think my one concern is that there isn't a direct admission that a violation did occur. Yes. Because there were with, um, with the other establishments. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, there's a So what's your feeling on that? That, that lesson is learned and that with an, you know, an extended suspension. Um, and, you know, I do recognize that there was you know, additional training put in, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah, and she yeah. also suspended um, the violator for two days. Yeah. So, took some action. I mean, I appreciate that as well. Um, I would just go uh, longer term. I mean, it doesn't have to be a year. It could be 18 months. It could be whatever you, you know. So I think um, the one year does then it's sufficient allow time. to come back to yeah. another. You want to make a motion on two days for a year? Is that what we're agreeing on? Yes. I'm just trying to remember the um, language. The language there. Um, yeah, I guess I make a I would make a motion to uh, for a suspension of two days. Um, and that suspension will be suspended for a period of um, one year, barring further vi future violations. Okay. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, do you understand? So the violation is a two-day loss of license if another occurrence within the next consecutive 12 months happen. You got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so a written decision will be sent out, certified mail to the licensee and the ABCC within three business days. Um, Sergeant, if you don't have anything further to add, we thank you for being here today. Appreciate the work that yourself and your department does on your compliance checks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.